Hi, my name's Alan Sao, and I help students master AP Physics 1. Today we're going to do our 10 minute review on work and energy. Now work and energy is a really, really important concept. About on, For AP Physics 1, about 25% of the multiple choice questions are going to include work and energy. And so I really want you guys to understand this is like a really, really, really key concept that permeates a huge part of mechanics. So the first thing is about the main idea of what it is that work and energy entails and how we're gonna solve problems using work and energy. So the biggest thing, the biggest theorem that I would say that encompasses all of work and energy is that work equals the change in energy of a system. Okay, so we have to explain what is work and then what is energy, right? So if, if you know nothing else about work and energy, just know that work is the change in energy. Now, what is the work that we're talking about? Work is a force times a dis displacement. And I want you to be very careful because work is a scalar quantity, whereas these things can be vector quantities. Okay, so when we're multiplying them, it's technically in vectors, we call this a dot product, but we're taking two vectors and we get a scalar. Now it's technically force parallel to the displace to the displacement, or you could, yeah, you could, or you could think about the, the displacement parallel to the force, it doesn't really matter. But what you're doing is you're saying, if I have a force vector and I have a displacement vector, that what I wanna do is I wanna take the component of the force that is parallel to the displacement, that is what does the work. This is the component that is perpendicular to the displacement, and I wanna multiply the component parallel to the displacement vector. Okay, so um, work, and the last thing we need to for quantities is work is greater than zero when the force and the displacement vector are in the same direction. And then the work is negative <clears throat> if the force parallel and the displacement are opposite directions. So if the force doesn't have any component that's parallel to the displacement, then you're not gonna have any work happening. Okay, so that's the work part. Now we're talking about the change in energy. Now when we talk about change in energy, we talk about the final minus the initial energy. Okay, now we have to talk about what forms of energy. In AP Physics 1, in mechanics, there are three forms of energy that we study. Okay, the three forms of energy are kinetic energy, that's the energy of motion. Okay, and that is equal to 1 half mv squared. Gravitational potential energy. And this has two equations, depending on whether you're doing near the Earth's surface or far from the Earth's surface, which is um, negative G m1 m2 over r. So this one is for far from the surf, far from the Earth's surface. And this is near the Earth's surface or planet surface. That would be Earth specifically. Okay, and then um, we're going to talk about spring potential energy, and that is one half kx squared, where k is a spring constant and x is how much you have stretched or compressed the spring from the relaxed length. Okay, and so those are the forms of energy. In rotation, we talk about rotational kinetic energy, which is a kind of form of kinetic energy, um, but for now, we're not gonna talk about the rotation. We're just reviewing just the work and energy without the rotation at this point. So these are the forms of energy. Now for gravitational potential energy, we only included, it is only when the Earth is in the system. Okay, that's an important part of to know about gravitational potential energy. And spring is only if there's a spring in the system. And you might be like, well, what is the system? The system might be whatever you defined or it might be defined for you in a problem. AP Physics 1, huge on understanding systems. You gotta understand what is in the system. So if I'm just talking about just an object, the only energy we're thinking about is kinetic energy. If we include the Earth in the system, then we include gravitational potential energy. If we include a spring in the system, then we include spring potential energy. And if we include the Earth and the spring and the object, then we have all three forms of energy in our system. So the process you're going to do is uh, we're going to calculate the work. If the work is zero, so if work is zero, by the way, okay, then the final energy is going to equal the initial energy. Now, how do we calculate the work? We've talked about the forces, but the this is the net work, right? This is from the free body diagram. You, have, you sum up the work. 
you sum the work from every every external force. Okay? So that's kind of the process. You're going to look at the work, you're going to look at the change in energy and expressions, and you're going to calculate that. So let's take a look at an example FRQ, an old FRQ analytical problem that we're going to look at. So we have a block of mass M slides up the incline as shown above with an initial speed V0 in the position shown. If the incline is frictionless, determine the maximum height to which the block will rise in terms of the given quantities and appropriate constants. So I'm always thinking work is the change in energy. So I want to think about one, what is my system? Because there's a change in height, we generally going to include the earth system. So let's talk about the block plus earth system. Okay. So we're going to include the block in the earth system. So now I'm going to consider a free body diagram of this guy. And one thing I want you to recognize is that energy is conserved during this motion. Why is that? Why do we say that? Some people say that. And why do we include that? Well, the work is zero because you look at each force and you look at the motion. It's going to go up this way. That's the displacement. OK, and so um, the normal force is perpendicular to the displacement. It doesn't do any work because, like we said before, in order for work to happen, there must be a component parallel to the displacement. So the normal force doesn't do any work. Gravity, we don't say it does any work because we've included it in the system. So this is an internal force. And then we are just going to say like, oh, okay, so that's part of the energy we've included as part of gravitational potential energy. So we don't need to worry about any work being done by that. So there's no work. So therefore, the change in energy is zero. And therefore, the initial energy equals the final energy. Okay, so that's the process that we're thinking about. So then we're going to say, well, what is the energy initially? Okay, so what energy do I have at the very bottom of the ramp? Well, initially, and we, so because we've included the Earth in the system, the energies we have to consider are kinetic energy and gravitational potential energy. So down here, if you make this, the bottom, h equals 0, you have to pick a reference height for when calculating gravitational potential energy. The initial energy only has kinetic energy. It doesn't have any gravitational potential energy because the, the h is 0. And at the maximum height, you got to remember from kinematics, at the maximum height, the velocity is 0. And so the energy we have here is going to be mgh, only gravitational potential energy. Why is there no kinetic energy? Because the v is 0. 1 half mv squared, the v would be you know, 0 squared is 0. So then you're just going to say, by conservation of energy, these two energies are equal to each other. And then you are going to solve for uh, h. It'd be 1 half v0 squared over g. Got to divide that g over. The m's cancel. Do that. OK. Now let's say the, now let's do it more complicated. Now let's say we do have, um, we, we have some friction happening here. The coefficient of sliding friction or kinetic friction, that's mu. And the box slides a distance h over 2 sine theta along the length of the ramp as it reaches new maximum height h2. Determine the new maximum height. So here, the work isn't zero, because if we modify a free body diagram, we have mg, we have normal force. And now we do have a force parallel to the displacement. So we do have work happening here. OK, now what is this work? Friction is going to do negative work. It's going to be negative. Why? Because it's opposite the direction of the motion times the displacement. Well, it told us it went of distance h2 over sine theta. So this is negative force of friction h2 over sine theta. And you know for kinetic friction, it's negative mu fn h2 over sine theta. OK, so that is the work that would be done by friction on the system. Now, we need to know what fn is, because I need to know it in terms of everything. But um, if you remember you're from your inclined plane stuff, you should know that the fn, because there's no acceleration in this direction, it would be mg cosine theta. So therefore, you can write this as negative mu mg cosine theta h2 over sine theta. OK, so that is the work part. Now let's talk about the change in energy part, right? What's the initial energy? The energy at the bottom, we have just kinetic energy. And what's the energy we have at the very top? Well, the velocity is 0, so the only energy we have is gravitational potential energy, mg h2. And then we just say the work, rather than saying the work was 0, now there is some work. The work equals the change in energy. 
right? And so this is the work. And that equals um, the final energy, mgh2, minus 1 half mv0 squared. Okay, so now we can divide out the m's. The m's will cancel for all of this. And we just want to solve for h2. So you want to group the h2s over here. So I'm going to make this negative mu g cosine over sine. I'm just going to write this cotangent theta. You don't have to do that, but it just makes it a little bit easier. Oops, no m. I already canceled the m. So g h2 minus 1 half v0 squared. And then you're just going to move this over and combine the h2 terms. So I'm going to have 1 half v0 squared over here. Move it to this side. You get g h2 plus mu g cotangent theta h2. And now we can factor out an h2. And you get g plus, I can actually factor out a g while I'm at it. And just make it 1 plus mu cotangent of theta. And then divide the g in the 1 plus mu cotangent theta. So you get v0 squared over 2 g 1 plus mu cotangent theta equals h2. Okay. So the math part is not the huge important part. The, the huge important part for you to understand is that work is the change in energy. And you want to analyze the work happening on the system as well as the change in energy and apply this principle. Work is the change in energy.